Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. It is an honor to have the opportunity this afternoon to speak to Bill C-10. It's an act to amend the Broadcasting Act. Now, updating this Broadcasting Act is crucially important. The statutes in this act provide the guidelines for everything in our media industry, from how our Canadian broadcasters operate to how we support Canadian content and production. Now, updating it right now is particularly important because, as we know, the Broadcasting Act has not really been updated at all since 1991, a long time before internet companies and online streaming services were competing with Canadian broadcasters. But, Mr. Speaker, it is deeply disappointing that the government's proposals are so incredibly lacking I'm going to focus in on four points here today. First, the legislation does nothing to address social media companies such as Facebook and Google and their various properties like YouTube to pay for their fair share. Secondly, it doesn't bring digital platforms like Netflix and Spotify into a system where they are on a level playing field with the conventional Canadian broadcasters. And third, it doesn't provide any details on Canadian content production and media fund contributions by digital broadcasters. And finally, it gives all of the power to the Canadian Radio, Television and Communications Commission commonly known as the CRTC, a body that is not only ineffective at regulating in their area, but often struggles to even enforce their own regulations. Mr. Speaker, before I dive into the details of this bill, I just want to give a little background. I know a lot of people in the House know that prior to my election, I spent uh, 40 plus years as a radio and television broadcaster here in the province of Saskatchewan. Now, during my broadcasting career, I experienced firsthand dramatic evolution of those industries and how Canadians interact with their media. When I first entered the industry back in the 70s, radio and television television were the dominant forces of entertainment here in this country. Now, over time, as television became more and more accessible and mainstream, demand for radio really declined. More recently, I think uh, you look at the music streaming services like Spotify and Google Music and Apple Music, they've attracted many Canadians away from radio. This has resulted in many stations across the country being forced to either greatly downsize or shut down entirely. And we've seen that here in my province of Saskatchewan. I'm going to give you some details here on the radio industry. You know, right now, a lot of stations in Saskatchewan run for only 12 hours. So they'll come on at 6 in the morning, they'll go till 6 at night, and then they'll have repeat programming for the for the next 12 hours. And this is disturbing because it's hard to find a live disc jockey or a live newscast at night because simply these stations only run 12 of the 24 hours. And it's disturbing because as a young broadcaster back in the 70s, that's how you learn the business. You work nights and late nights. So that has been taken away by a lot of people in this province. And like I said, it's hard to find right now a live announcer after 7 p.m. on any Saskatchewan radio station. Now, major conglomerates have kind of gobbled up some of the radio industries in Saskatchewan, uh, Prince Albert and North Battleford, and and even uh, the satellite feeder in uh, Meadow Lake, gobbled up by the Patterson Group. I will say this, though, Mr. Speaker, we've seen kind of renaissance in the province with smaller radio stations trying to make it on the FM dial. I look at Humboldt, recently Assiniboia, and this past January, actually, Nippowan got their license for the first time in that northeast area of Saskatchewan. There was an intervention, I should mention, by one of the big players in the country, but Nippon today have their own FM station radio-wise as they got approval from the CRTC in January. I would be remiss to say MBC Radio. That is the Mississippi Mississippi Broadcasting Corporation. It is Saskatchewan's only Indigenous radio station located in La Ronge. So 10 hours a week, they broadcast in Diné 
and 10 hours a week they broadcast in Cree. This bill, C-10, the Broadcasting Act, this is where I would really like the CRTC to concentrate. We have seen this station uh, give Cree, along with Diné language, up in northern Saskatchewan, needed. And in fact, during the election, I caught one of the advertising by a candidate done in Diné, a 30-second spot uh, telling the people up there to vote for him or her. It was kind of interesting. It was really good. I, I also had the fortunate opportunity to go to Nunavut just two years ago, and I went to eight communities up there, and, um, you know, they speak a lot of English, Inuit, and uh, Inukutuk is spoken. So when I went up there and saw uh, the people up in Nunavut and, you know, Chesterfield Inlet and Ayurvat and, and, and so on, uh, that is their way of communicating. And that is my concern today with the CRTC. How are they going to look after this whole uh, C-10 Broadcasting Act? It is big. We have a big country. I've just pointed out in Nunavut. I've pointed out in northern Saskatchewan and many other places in this country where this is a very, very big bill. Now, similarly, as streaming services like Netflix and YouTube and even Disney Plus increasingly become the default source of entertainment for many across this country, many television studios are struggling and beginning to downsize and cut costs. And we saw that today with the announcement from Rogers. Now, much like their radio counterparts, television stations actually here in Saskatchewan have been forced to make cuts and many local stations have either been shut down or have really reduced staff. And I can tell you, as a former broadcaster in this province, I remember Swift Current had their, their own television station. Yorkton and Prince Albert, although they're repeater stations now, Prince Albert for Saskatoon and Yorkton for Regina, I remember at one time CKBI Prince Albert television had over 80 staff. So we don't have that anymore. So you can see the industry is coming down. And uh, those are two examples that I give you where Swift Current no longer has a TV station. Yorkton basically has two or three people and same for CKBI Prince Albert. So for a long time, I think sports was considered the bedrock of television. While television series could always be recorded, watching sports live had a particular importance. No one wanted to miss that big game or have the results spoiled. However, even sports today, a sector that has long thrived based on live television, is moving away from the traditional broadcast. Services like the NHL Game Center, DAZN, Sportsnet Now, and TSN Direct allow sports fans to watch their favorite teams from whenever they'd like. You can flip between games and even watch multiple games at once. And I I will make this point. I remember 2010 Olympics in Vancouver. The president of Bell Media was in line for the gold medal game, the women's hockey gold medal game, a big crowd in Vancouver. He couldn't get into the game on time. And at that time, the game was streamed. And the president of Bell Canada went on his phone and watched the game. And he turned to his assistant while he was in line and said, this is the future of broadcasting. Bell Canada has to buy this. That was in 2010. And lo and behold, shortly time after, Bell reacquired the CTV television network. The reality today is that the way most of us here in the House of Commons consumed entertainment growing up is no longer the norm. Many growing up today would consider it simply out of date or even obsolete. Certainly, even though many of these changes have been revolutionary and have benefited consumers, they have created many problems for the Canadian broadcasting sector. So our laws and our regulations need to be updated to match the changes of the last 30 years. So, Mr. Speaker, that raises the question, what exactly needs to be fixed in a modernized broadcasting act? Well, the internet giants like Netflix and Spotify simply aren't paying their fair share. These companies don't pay taxes. They aren't required to pay into the Canada Media Fund as conventional broadcasters are today. They aren't required to meet the Canadian content requirements that conventional broadcasters are bound by. 
as more and more attention is paid to major streaming giants, and they are taking up more and more of the market share, conventional Canadian broadcasters, both at the local and the national level, are being pinched out, and they know that. The current circumstances not only create an uneven playing field, it puts Canadian broadcasters at a significant disadvantage in having to allocate their resources where internet giants simply do not. So the Broadcasting Act clearly needs to be updated for the world that is dominated today by the internet. Now, unfortunately, the legislation that the government has put forward to us today is wholly inadequate in addressing the issues that I've just laid out. So let's begin taking a look at what government's main solution seems to be in this bill, C-10. I think they're passing the buck solely to the CRTC. And I think that's unfortunate. The government is simply passing off the responsibility to the unelected body that has historically had many issues fulfilling its own mandate, particularly on this issue. You know, Mr. Speaker, at the beginning of this year, the Canadian Broadcasting and Telecommunication Legislative Review Panel tabled their report in Ottawa, known as the Yale Report. In fact, I attended that news conference in January in Ottawa when they released their 94 recommendations. Now, that news conference lasted almost two hours. Plenty of questions directed at the panel and it was directed by conventional broadcasters. Many of them expressed concerns about some of the 94 recommendations that were made that day. The objective of the panel was to review the current broadcasting and telecommunications framework and present possible paths forward for Canadian broadcasting. While I have my own issues with some of the recommendations in this report, one thing that has been raised as a major concern in my meetings with industry stakeholders is that the Yale report makes it clear the CRTC already has the power to regulate internet giants like Netflix. Now that surprised a lot of people. If the CRTC can already regulate Netflix and its online counterparts, why haven't they done so? So let's be clear here. The CRTC, the Canadian broadcasters, and the government have all known for years what the impact of the unregulated online market is. It is crushing Canadian broadcasters. What has the CRTC done with the power that they have to regulate? Absolutely nothing. And yet, they have years to act. One can't help but wonder if the Canadian media today would be in a much better state if it weren't for the CRTC's lack of desire to actually take some action. This bill doesn't change that. It simply reiterates it. It restates a power that the CRTC already has and has opted not to use. So why would they use it now? There is absolutely no reason to believe that the CRTC is going to change now when there is no compulsion to do so. Even if the CRTC decided to finally take the steps that they've had the power to do for years and regulate the web giants, I'm highly skeptical that they would bother to enforce them. You know, sure, the government claims that this legislation, legislation before us today will modernize the CRTC's enforcement powers to ensure compliance with hypothetical regulations that the CRTC is not bound to actually make. But we already know that the CRTC doesn't necessarily use powers that they are given. On the specific issue of enforcement, I remember during my time as a broadcaster when the license renewal would come up every five years, everyone would be on their best behavior in the station. Station management would make sure that everything was perfect for their hearings with the CRTC. And once they gave us the license renewal, we wouldn't hear from them again five years later. They didn't follow up to make sure we were abiding by the terms of our license at all. I also think about more recent example where the CRTC is simply failing Canadians. Earlier this year, at the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, the CBC decided to pull CBC Compass, their 30-minute local news program, 
in Prince Edward Island. And the only local news for PEI, they took it off the air. At a time when Islanders needed their local news the most, the CBC abandoned them. What did the CRTC do? Absolutely nothing. It was only through the outrage of viewers in that area that the CBC brought Compass back and their newscasts to uh, the people of Prince Edward Island. If the CRTC isn't going to act when Canadians need it the most, how can we expect them to actually act in the best interests of Canadians when it comes to internet giants? I remember an instance on Global doing something similar here in the city. So, you know, Mr. Speaker in Saskatoon, we had a newscast that actually came out of Toronto and CRTC was unaware of that. It has since been rectified in the city. So Mr. Speaker, I think everyone here can understand my skepticism today, putting all of our eggs into one basket by dumping this on to the CRTC. But for the sake of argument, let's pretend like it isn't an issue. Let's pretend that the regulator has absolutely no issues in fulfilling their mandate. Are there any other problems with this bill? Well, let's start with social media. This legislation does nothing to ensure that online platforms like Facebook and Google, platforms that have built their businesses by sharing other people's content, are paying their fair share. In fact, this bill absolves those companies from responsibility for content posted on their platforms. Then we need to consider what measures are being proposed to make sure that conventional broadcasters on are on a level playing field with digital platforms. The reality, nothing. It gives no guidance or explanation of how the regulations or guidelines should be created or drawn. Finally, this legislation provides no guidelines at all as to whether or not digital platforms will be forced to meet the same Canadian content production rules or to be required to make payments into the Canadian Media Fund. All of our conventional broadcasters must still meet these requirements. This sounds nothing like leveling the playing field. But don't worry if this doesn't go well. The government is here to save the day because they can settle any issues with the ordering council afterwards. So instead of being clear with broadcasters and Canadians, the government is going to wait a little longer and potentially maybe implement policy later. That is simply not a plan and broadcasters could not prepare for the future while these discussions and regulations are created behind closed doors. Who could blame Canadians if they begin to wonder what the government is planning to implement that it it isn't willing to put in today's legislation? What are they hiding? They haven't told us. So let's review. There is no guarantee that the CRTC will actually fulfill their obligation and produced regulation. They could have before, and they didn't. If they do, will they enforce them? And what about the rules for platforms and conventional broadcasters? What are they going to look like? This bill doesn't tell us. We don't know what rules around the Canada Media Fund or even Canadian content will be. There is nothing new to deal with social media platforms. So what do we know? Well, not a lot, actually. What we do have, I think, is a lot of uncertainty. Mr. Speaker, the government is leaving the whole process up in the air with regard to the CRTC. Industry can't be sure what they're going to do, actually regulate in this area, because they have totally neglected it in the past. Even if they do, it is going to take months and months for Canadians to hear anything from them. And that means months and months of more uncertainty in a time where our media industry is already greatly struggling. Since I am running out of time, Mr. Speaker, I want to reiterate my serious concern about the legislation that is before us here today. The Canadian broadcasters and creators are struggling mightily. We know that. The government needs to do something to remedy the situation. The power to regulate companies like Netflix already exists under the CRTC. They have chosen not to act, and this legislation does not compel them to. What reason do Canadians have to believe that the CRTC will bring in new regulation or that will be enforced after that? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm running out of time. Thank you.